unlock the promise that holds the key to the last great move of God and what it means for you. Dr. R.T. Kendall reveals insight into what we can expect from the final end time revival and how to not miss it. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Within the very fabric of church history is the common thread of revival. From the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts 2 down to the many movements throughout history, God has been moving in generation after generation. Yet, there's been many prophecies about a coming greater revival before the return of Jesus. Some might believe that it's already happened, but according to today's guest, it still lies ahead. I believe that as well. And today, we'll talk more about that. But first, joining me around the table is April Simons. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you ready for a great outpouring, awakening, I, Holy Ghost, <laughs> revival? I am ready. I'm ready to go deep today. So it's yeah, good. It's good, Dorothy. Hello. We need. We really need <sighs> the Spirit of God in a way. Yes, that's a great revival. Just refresh. Come to, come to your first love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. get to know Him and be present in who He is. Oh, yeah. yes, definitely. Cindy Johnston, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, and I'm excited about the, this guest today. Um, I love hearing from someone that has so much ex- life experience and so much <laughs> wisdom. Yeah. And I'm ready to just take it in. It's a good way. He'll want you on every show after saying that. <laughs> Kendra Kelly Dean, how are you? I am good. Yes, I love this guest as well. Yeah. He's very feisty. But very knowledgeable <laughs> in a good and way. I, in a great way, and yeah. you know, and listen, he, when you're 80 a, something, you have every right. You to can be. say whatever you want I to mean, say. Yeah. Absolutely, that's what I found. But yeah. it's it's always good to hear these voices because they shake us and remind us yeah. about what's so important. I am ready for the revival. I'm ready yeah. for God to reveal Himself in a whole new way that He never has before. Mm-hmm. Amen. So. Cindy Murdoch. I'm ready to hear the truth of what our guest has to bring because you know, it's Cindy said this the other night. And I grabbed a hold of it again because revival really has to begin with us. And so just hearing today what we hear and can we apply that to ourselves. Yes, Dr. R.T. Kendall, welcome back to the table. Thank you. And we do appreciate your wisdom. Yes. And I just think that we should have even greater honor for those that have experienced so many life experiences, been in ministry for so many years and God had used in such a great way. And uh, we counted privilege to have him here at the table. Well, in looking at the current state of the world, there's no doubt that the light of Jesus is the answer that's needed. And throughout history, uh, times such as this have been the precursor for great spiritual awakenings. Are we on the cusp? of that great move of God, and is there a last great revival still to come? Do you believe that? I do, I do. And it may be hard for you to believe this, but for the last 40 years, every day when I wake up, first thing, I think, Lord, could this be the day? Mm. Yeah. That's how much I believe it. So you thought about that when you were the pastor of Westminster Chapel yeah, on Monday. Yeah, and they knew the view that I take in this book. They hear, they heard it all the time. Yeah. But I never went publicly with it outside Westminster Chapel until our first Wembley uh, Conference Center in 1992. Yeah. And yeah. then when I gave this, what's in the book that you've, you're going to talk about, was not well received at all. Well, you know... Um, we're, we're living in times today that are just unprecedented. I know you have to say that maybe you never could have imagined 40 years ago that you would see what you're seeing today. Exactly. I, um, I think every week I can't be shocked yeah. and something happens that I'm shocked. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You know, um, John Paul Jackson uh, went on to be with Jesus. He was a dear friend of both of ours. His wife is here in the studio today, Diane. And um, he had a lot to say about this as well, didn't he? Well, he was with me all the way on this teaching. Mm-hmm. And I owe so much to John Paul. And uh, I miss him. And uh, I think not the last time I was with you, but the time before last, he was here okay. together. We, we were, I saw it, uh, oh, some months ago, I think you played it with him and me uh-huh. on this. Yeah. Well, uh, we've, um, we've played a lot of 
the programs, older programs on um, Daystar Espanol too, the new yeah. network that has launched to our Spanish speaking community. So we're excited about that. So let's talk about uh, what this looks like, what's coming, what the Bible talks about. Uh, how will we recognize it as being the great awakening in the last revival before Jesus comes? It will be so obvious. You won't need to ask, is this it? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's coming. It's coming. I'd like to think it's in my lifetime. I'm 88 years old. Uh, 50 years ago, I had a vision uh, of revival that went right around the world. Mm -hmm. And it was real. And people were shaken. Mm -hmm. And people are not shaken today. There's no fear of God in the nation, no fear of God in the church. And uh, I've held this view, uh, as I said, when I first gave it publicly, people didn't like it. At the Wembley Conference Center in 1992, I gave a statement that the charismatic movement is Ishmael. And they resented that. I understood that. I understood well, that. Well, you have to understand you're charismatic too. So. Well, okay. Yeah, uh, with a small C. I don't yeah. dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Yeah, but you're spirit-filled. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm one of you. I'm just saying you're, <laughs> yeah. you're one of us. You're one of us. Okay. Not to worry. Yeah. I'm one of you. But I, I take the view that in the same way Abraham sincerely thought that Ishmael was the promised child, and he was wrong. God said, no, There's more. Sarah will conceive. Mm -hmm. Ish, uh, Ishmael is not the promise, promised child. It's going to be Isaac. And Abraham's reaction, you read it, Genesis 17. Oh, Lord, please let it be Ishmael. And that's the reaction of charismatics over the years. Please let it be us. We've paid the price. I mean, the movement of of the charismatic influence went all over Latin America, South America, South Africa, China. God was with you. Did a lot of and, good. And the greatest hymns yes. yeah. uh, are by charismatics. And uh, so I'm not putting them down, Ishmael, but I'm saying something is coming yeah. that is far, far greater. Mm -hmm. And, and John, that's what you're focusing on. I mean, it's like um, Isaac was the, was the promised child in this end time revival is going to be so incredible. And those of you watching that, and I always say this, if you don't know Jesus, it's, it, this is the most important time to get in and just call on his name. You tried everything else. Why not give him a shot and say, God, I've tried to do things my way. I, why don't I just call out on your name and invite you into my heart and life to change my life and forgive me of my sins. And uh, I always say my grandfather did that when he was 19 years old and transformed his life. He didn't know what kind of prayer to pray. He just said, God, if you're there, I need you. Yes. And uh, there are going to be a lot of heart cries heard like that when this happens, don't you think? John Paul came to see me in London when I was still at Westminster. And he said, I've got a word that you should hear. Mm. And I'll fast forward because there's a lot of details that I do talk about in the book. Yes. Uh, receiving the Isaac promise. John Paul says the key to the next great move of God on the earth is the book of Romans and especially Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 is what Martin Luther discovered in, in the Great Reformation. And so what we're talking about when the great revival comes that we're counting on, which I'm calling Isaac, will not just be signs, wonders, miracles, but a restoration of the pure gospel. Mm -hmm. John Paul said there'll be people who have not been anywhere near this until this takes place, and they will stand where no one has stood since the days of the early church. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to envisage this, to think that over the years, there's been a withheld power from us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've just had touches. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a touch in the New England awakening. Mm -hmm. It shook America. It gave uh, America her soul. Mm -hmm. It influenced the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. Then the Cane Ridge revival uh, in early 19th century and when it gave us the Bible Belt. That's but there have ne never been anything like that since. Just touches, you know. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, you're, there's a touch. Uh, but what's coming it will eclipse everything that we're talking about. You know, um, you also wrote another great book on forgiveness. We were talking about that earlier. And one of the things that I really see, not only in the body of Christ today, but in the world, is people are so angry and have so much bitterness and unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. How important is it 
that we see that dealt with. <laughs> it's very, very important. I could make a case that it's the greatest need of the church today. Mm -hmm. And uh, my life was changed while I was at Westminster Chapel. Uh, I'd been in the ministry for years. I'm ashamed to say that I needed it when an old friend of mine, Joseph Tsun, in my darkest hour, when I told him what they did, I was expecting him to put his arm around me and say, RT, you ought to be angry. Get it out of your system. Or let me call them and give them a piece yeah. of money. Yeah. <laughs> he just looked at me, and if I could uh, mimic a Romanian accent, <laughs> RT, you must totally forgive them <laughs> until you totally forgive them. You will be in chains. Yeah. Yeah. Release them, and you will be released. Change my life. And not only that, you must totally forgive them. Yes. That's as long as you have unforgiveness, you will be in chains. Yeah. I mean, you can't see those chains, yeah. but spiritually, yeah. there are chains that are wrapped yes. around you because you're yeah. not willing to forgive whatever happened to you. And understand that just because you forgive doesn't mean you excuse right. what they did, right? And a lot of people misunderstand that. Exactly. In my opinion... Joni, that my doing that, and it wasn't easy, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but when I did it, it resulted in, how shall I say it, you call it anointing? I began to get insight like I've never had in my life. Mm -hmm. In a day when you can't get books published, publishers queue up, will take anything I give them. Mm -hmm. God has given me thoughts, and they're not my thoughts. People say it's my education. It's not that at all. It's the anointing. And it's, yes. it comes with totally forgiving. When there's no bitterness, yeah. yes. no anger, no unforgiveness, then the Holy Spirit can live in you ungrieved. Yes. And that's where the insight comes. You know, I was going wow. through a situation like presently where someone came up to me and they knew there were things, there's always things going on when you're in ministry where they knew about a situation and, and they were like, you know, I saw that person and I just loved on them and told them I loved them. And, and are you okay with that? And I was like, absolutely. I was like, love right. yes. is never the wrong answer. Right. Right. Loving people, forgiving mm -hmm. people. Um, I can't say that I would have felt that way in my 20s or 30s, <laughs> but now that I'm in my, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> I, I understand it is so important to have yeah. my thoughts in my mind clear for the yes. Holy Spirit to speak, because you're right, it will stop the flow. Yeah, 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 I could go on and on about that. You know, what do you think, um, Dr. Kendall, what's, what's going to take the world to get to that place, or even let's say believers, to get back to that fear and awe and reverence of God, because it'll we have take, gotten away. It'll take this outpouring. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not ready for it, but we never will be. It's my view. There's nothing we can do to hasten it. Yeah. And there's nothing we can do to stop it. It's coming. Mm -hmm. It's on God's calendar. And uh, I would go to the stake for this. Mm -hmm. I believe this. It's going to happen. I just hope it's in my lifetime. Yeah. I, and I have reason to think that it will be, but I can't prove that. We'll find out. I you know, hope so. But that is what will bring about the awe. Yeah. That will be a restoration of the fear of God. You right. take the second coming... Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, Behold, he comes with clouds. Every eye shall see him. They also that saw him will wail, W-A-I-L, mm -hmm. wail before him. I believe the awakening that we're talking about will bring that kind of repentance, and it will be a restoration of the genuine fear of God. Right. That's good. Yeah. What about the church? What are some practical ways that we can um, be prepared or, you know, be the evangelist, the hands and feet of Jesus so that we can continue to spread the gospel? It's a good question. The only thing I can say, know your Bible and pray a lot. Mm -hmm. Those two things. Good. Know your Bible mm -hmm. and pray a lot. What worries me more than anything in the, uh, in the world, people don't read their Bibles. They don't it's know true. their Bibles. So and true. ministers today who 20 years ago believed the Bible are, are now only turned to the Bible if they need a sermon. Uh, we mm -hmm. need people that will read it every day. I would urge every person to have a one-year Bible reading plan. Mm -hmm. That takes four chapters a day. That's great. Uh, you know, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit has come, he will remind you, yeah. remind you of what I've taught you. Mm -hmm. Well... So many of us were empty-headed, yeah. and we want the Holy Spirit to fill us. <laughs> but I say, people who say, well, I need somebody to pray for me, and I fall to the floor. 
<laughs> if you fall to the floor empty-headed, you'll come up <laughs> empty-headed. Mm -hmm. We need to have the knowledge of the Bible. I'm not yes. talking about seminary, mm -hmm. university. Yeah. I believe the next move of God will be with ordinary people, maybe with yeah. just high school education. God is going to use ordinary people that just love the Lord. Yes. Amen. That's right. good. Cindy. I see that so evident in my own life of at times as a pastor's wife that people call and they want you to give them the scripture and want you to pray for them. And this happened over a couple week period where the same person was wanting prayer like three or four times a day. And while you want to pray, but she's a believer as well. And I'm saying, thinking how important it is that she pray and know that God hears her, yes. but that the word has got to be in our heart. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's somebody that will say, write in and I will pray for you. Better, write in and I'll teach you how to pray. Yes. Yes. Right. I'm, get, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump off the ship again because I know there's somebody watching <laughs> that you heard him talk about total forgiveness and you have to wholly forgive. Mm. That's W-H-O-L-L-Y. Um, but they're saying, how do I do that? So will you just touch on that then we'll get back to talking okay, about Okay, I'm happy to. Well, I, I give several principles. Number one, you do not tell anybody what they did. Yes. I talked to a man. But what if you did? You just asked the Lord to forgive you for telling everybody. <laughs> well, but you, you violated it. You violated it. Okay. You see, uh, the old spiritual, nobody knows <laughs> the troubles I've seen. Yeah. Nobody knows but Jesus. He likes it that way. Yes. Yeah. The trouble is, yeah. we tell 500 and yeah. then tell the Lord. Yeah. You see, he wants to be treated special. He's the only one that knows. Mm, that's great. Principle number two, you let them save face. You don't rub their nose in it. Principle number three, you don't throw it up. And uh, the thing is, you pray for them. And when you pray for them, you don't say, well, God, I commit them to you. Because <laughs> you're hoping God will kill them. <laughs> the principle, when you can pray for them mm -hmm. sincerely, yes. sincerely, and say, Lord, bless them. Yes. Yes. You're there. Well, I violated all of those principles, <laughs> so I'm just going to have to go back. But, yeah, I mean, you talked to your Romanian friend and told him. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. I think sometimes a trustworthy person okay. to share. You can tell one person. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Just for you. Hey, Sandy, get ready, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kendra. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree. I think having that one righteous friend to hold you accountable for how to behave and react righteously yeah. Yeah. instead of in the flesh is so important. Mm -hmm. But um, I think another thing to balance off of that is the reason why you want to keep it between you and the Lord is because as humans, we have a tendency to carry other people's offenses. Yes. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. why muddy up their relationship with the Lord? Why muddy up the way they view that person? It when will it's so, affect sometimes. Yeah, and I think that a lot of this anger and hate that we're seeing in the world today is actually generational hate that's brought down from childhood to parent, to child, to parent, it just keeps on going because we've not been taught how to properly forgive. The thing is, it's an act of the will. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. ask God to knock you down. Yeah. When you see you've got to do it, you do it. Yeah. And you refuse to tell what they did. Yeah. And uh, you put them at ease. You don't let them be afraid of you. Mm -hmm. Perfect love casts out fear. Yeah. Fear has to do with punishment. Mm -hmm. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Mm -hmm. This teaching would heal any marriage it's overnight so if both the husband and wife would tear up those wrongs. It's you know, so we good. were just reading in Proverbs last night. We're going through the whole book again, and because we we read a chapter every night together, and um, and there was there was a part in there. It might have been Proverbs nine or ten. I'm not sure, but it actually talked about you know covering and uncovering, and and the Lord covers. Yes. Thank and God. Satan uncovers, yeah. right? Yes. And so we can take, we can understand by that example that it that it really is good advice that you're giving. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, you know, that Abraham was really surprised when Isaac showed up. Yeah. Are we going to be surprised? Um, I think, yeah, largely the world will be taken by surprise. They're not ready for it. They're not ready for it. It's like on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. the Spirit came down. Right. And People said, what, what's going on? What is this? And Peter stood up and explained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cindy? Yeah. So when we're talking about this great revival that's coming, one of the things you mentioned is to let our speech 
be salty? What does that look like? Or Peter talks about when you speak, do it with the very words of God. I think the people that God will use in this great awakening, we're ordinary people, and they will have utterance. They won't be afraid. Uh, the same people, well, look, Peter denied the Lord six weeks before, mm -hmm. and now look what power he had before the Sadducees. So people who are afraid to talk to their next door neighbor mm -hmm. will then be given the power. There'll be, and I hope all Christians, I don't think it will be all Christians. Yeah. I think there are three categories, Matthew 25. There were the wise, there were the foolish, which were asleep, but then there'll be those who participate in the cry. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. They're the ones that God will use, mm -hmm. and it won't be and I respect Billy Graham, I respect Oral Roberts, but it won't be people like that. It'll be ordinary people that are filled with such power that they won't be afraid to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. Bus drivers, restaurant people, yes. where yes. they get their hair done. It'll, it'll be the talk of the town. Mm -hmm. In the Great Awakening of New England, Jonathan Edwards commented, the whole town was talk about God. That was a fork taste of what is going to happen on a large scale down Don't the road. Don't you have a pulpit? That was Jonathan Edwards, or who was it? At, did, didn't you have a pulpit, a special pulpit, at Westminster Chapel that belonged to one of the great no, preachers? We, <laughs> well, it's funny. We had George Whitfield's chair. Okay, George Whitfield. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was some kind of piece of furniture, you know. And then when Sotheby's came in and examined it, they said, it's not Whitfield's chair. Aww. So we had to, I said to Billy Graham, I'm name dropping. <laughs> I spent two hours with him. I, I said, sit in Whitfield's chair. And he said, oh, let me sit in. <laughs> Found out later, it's not Whitfield's chair. <laughs> oh no, now the whole world knows it was not Whitfield's chair. Well, one of the things you talk about, I love this, that it will, it will all begin when the actual gospel is being preached because yeah. I know that's one thing that we have yes. become passionate about here at Daystar yes. is every opportunity that we have to present the gospel, Good. we are doing so. But you also talk about that uh, what believers in churches, to go to your question, what they must do. And one, you, know, you mentioned let your speech be salty, but you also said show lavish thanksgiving and praise. So exactly. Yeah. You've heard the expression you cannot outgive the Lord, mm -hmm. which I believe. It's also true you cannot outthank the Lord mm -hmm. because the more you thank Him, the more He just pours blessing Ooh, on you. Yes. Yes. And yes. being thankful almost becomes selfish. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yes, this is vital. Okay, and then you say avoid bitterness at all costs, and that kind of ties into the whole unforgiveness because yeah. mm -hmm. you usually have bitterness after unforgiveness, don't you? Yes, well, it's people that uh, can't get over a word not nice to them. Mm -hmm. uh, when I found out that by forgiving a person I got more anointing, I decided to get a, a list of people who've been enemies. I, I pray, honestly, I, it's selfish. It's, it's not piety. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting more anointing for praying for my enemies. Yeah, well, and it's just freeing. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it just frees me, yes. um, especially if you are already, you have a sensitivity to people and to situations and discernment. And it's like, yeah. if you have that, it's almost like the enemy will try to use that against you. Mm -hmm. And so I try to be, you know, purposeful in understanding mm -hmm. that it's not always what my flesh wants to think or believe. And it's choosing to believe the best, yes. even when maybe yeah. mm -hmm. I'm telling myself, well, I don't know, you know, they may or may not yeah. like this or that, but I just choose to believe the best and, and always forgive. You also said, learn to detect a rival spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is that what in is yourself, that? a it's rival spirit? It's called jealousy. Oh. You see, we all have it. Mm -hmm. It's the sin nobody talks about. Yeah. I wrote a book on it. Our friend Jay John thinks it's my best book, yeah. a book on jealousy. And you tell a story about yourself in that. You see, I followed two great men, G. Camel Morgan uh, and then Martin Lloyd-Jones, the greatest preacher ever. And now here am I from the hills of Kentucky. I never felt it was my pulpit. He'd been there 30 years and he was an icon. He was my mentor and he's the one that put me there. He's, uh, but I never had the success he had. And therefore I always felt I'm not doing any good at all. Uh, but God used me a little bit. And how long were you there, RT? 25 years. See, wow. 25 <laughs> years and were a blessing. Mm -hmm. Think about that great legacy that's been left there. Yeah. And, and even what's happening in Europe, that has to, that has to bring angst in your heart and spirit. Yeah, I believe it would not surprise me 
if the revival breaks out in England mm -hmm. uh, because of Smith Wigglesworth. You see, when I gave this prophetic address at Wembley Conference Center and 90% of the charismatics resented me, somebody came up to me a day or two later and said, didn't Smith Wigglesworth say the same thing? Oh, wow. Did you get it from him? And I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Wigglesworth prophesied the same thing. And the coming together of the Word and Spirit. Yeah. And that's it's what uh, it's all about. Coming together, yeah. the Word and the Spirit. Simultaneous combination of Word and Spirit will result in spontaneous combustion. Oof. Take about the two minutes, um, RT, if you will, and just talk to our audience about those who are sitting there watching and listening, but they really don't know what would happen if they died right now. Look in the hey. camera. If you stood before God, and you will, and he were to ask you, he might, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? Suppose it were for real. And you're standing there and giving the right answer will get you in and giving the wrong answer means you go to hell. What would you say? By this time, you should already have thought the reason. It's because Jesus died on the cross but if you think, well, I've tried to be a good person, that's not good enough. I was baptized, that's not good enough. I joined the church, that's not good enough. I was brought up in a Christian home. It's a good start, but that won't save you. Your only hope of going to heaven is because Jesus Christ shed his blood. That blood satisfied the wrath of God. And I know I'm going to go to heaven, not because I'm trying to be a good person or I'm a preacher. No, it doesn't help at all. I have one hope. Jesus died for me. There's an old hymn in the church. My hope is built on nothing less yes. than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And what does the prayer look like? Could you pray a little simple prayer? We'll repeat after you. I would urge you to pray right now. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I need you. I need you. I want you. I want you. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry, sorry for my sins. Wash my sins away by your blood. Wash my sins away by your blood. I invite your Holy Spirit into my heart. I invite your Holy Spirit into my heart. As best as I know how, I give you my life. I give you my life. Amen. That's Jesus' good. name, beautiful, R.T. Yes. That was yes. such a beautiful yes. explanation of the gospel. Well, we're out of time. I hope you've been inspired and encouraged today. God has certainly moved many times across many generations, but we can look confidently ahead for there is still a greater revival coming our way and you don't want to miss it. So if you're watching today, you want a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you prayed that prayer, I would love to send you a free book entitled, Now What? What do I do after I receive Jesus. There's a toll-free number on your screen. Prayer partners are standing by, always ready to pray with you, encourage you. But I want to thank Dr. R.T. Kendall for joining us at the table. For more information, be sure and pick up a copy of his book, Receiving the Isaac Promise. We just barely scratched the surface in for additional information and many resources and great books. My favorite one is God Minute for My Good. I love that one. You can visit him online at rtkindleministries.com. And if you've been touched by today's Table Talk, be sure to let us know. You can leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, X, or YouTube. We always love hearing what the Lord is doing in your life. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, RT. Thank we you love for you. Me. You're always welcome here at, at Daystar and at Table Talk. Bye bye for today.